Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In today's episode, we have a kind of a mailbag. Uh, in the last video, I showed you a Raspberry Pi 4 case. It's the one sitting right here that uh, MageDoc sent me um, to help with my videos. And at the same time they sent me that, they also sent me these two screens to have a look at. The one underneath is a brand new one, which is an upgraded, more modern version of the one we were using in the last video, which is this one here. It's an IPS uh, full 1080p touchscreen 11.6 inch display. Uh, this one that I had videoed and reviewed before is uh, it's got a plastic backing to it, uh, things like that. It's a much older version. The new one here has an aluminum has an aluminum case, uh, aluminium if you're in Europe, and the one above it I requested from them because I was doing a bit of experimenting with uh, screens for the Raspberry Pi, both reusing old screens from laptops um, or desktops, and also what other options there were available. And you've seen videos from me, hopefully before, where I've demonstrated the official Raspberry Pi screen, but um, this one is probably fairly comparable in price once you figure it all out, including case and things like that, but it's in an all-in-one nice unit and it's also higher resolution. So let's get these unboxed. We'll have a look at the big one first and then we'll go on to the one that is specifically for the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to pause the video for a second and I will uh, actually why pause the video let's just get right into it. We'll move this one out of the way for the moment and we will focus on this one. So as per the same as the previous 11.6 inch screen it comes in a very nice well packaged case. Let's just slide the top off. Um, little almost like yeah magnetic little flapper very reminiscent of um, Apple type packaging which is actually a compliment Apple have always been very good at packaging their equipment so oh, got a couple of pens thrown in here that's always nice let's just get those out out the way it's from Mage Doc and uh, we have a warranty card and we have a T1160 Pro IPS 1920x1080 USB-C with PD fast charge portable monitor. Uh, the fast charge is USB outlet so that you could fast charge other devices so you don't have to lose a connection if you have this plugged into a USB-C power supply you can daisy chain on to fast charge something else. So we'll have a look through the manual maybe a bit later, but first things first, we'll uh, get the product out and see how intuitive it is. So here's the display itself, nicely wrapped, well protected. Pretty heavy, nice and solid. So I'm not sure which way is the top. I would say that way is the right way up. So as you can see there, beautiful screen. Uh, if I compare it to the existing, let's just get a uh, I minute, mean, let's just finish emptying the box, see what else is in here. So we have a HDMI cable, my, uh, mini HDMI to HDMI. We have a USB to US, USB A to USB C cable. Uh, some screws for Visa mounting, we'll leave that in the box. Um, a USB-C to USB-C, so again if you wanted to charge your phone or something. And we have the same type of stand as what came with the previous screen. So they don't include a Visa stand or anything like that. And I find for portability this one works very, very well. So 
So let's get the box out of the way. Oh, and there's a couple of um, cable Velcro cable tie straps for neatening up your cables. Okay, let's just move these aside for a second. Okay, so getting a little bit of reflections by trying to have them on the overhead camera, so I switched to my alternate camera um, looking at it from the side. The screen you see here at the front is the new Mage Dark T1160 IPS panel. The one at the back is the older one. I mean, aside from the obvious fact that this one is physically a little bit smaller, the first thing I notice is that the buttons that are down the side are the opposite way around, um, both on the side of the screen. On this one, they're at this side. And I think they've just taken them and flipped them around because they, they're they in the reverse order as well. So it's probably the same controller inside. It's just flipped over to the other side. Anyway, I've hooked up my Pi to both screens, which is why you can see them both on here. Um, because I'm capturing from another camera, it's difficult to see the image quality on here, um, but it is definitely running at 1080p. For some reason, the screen is still, the touch panel is still way off. It was fine when I only had one screen on here. I think what it's trying to do is it's trying to work across both screens. That I don't think is a problem with the screen. I think that's a problem with the Pi 4 software, the Buster software, because that is going, yeah, that is exactly what it's doing. So what I'll do then, um, well, let's just look at the two screens for a moment. I think you'll agree that the... Uh, the image quality is, from what you can see there, about the same. I do have a different image on each one, um, but the brightness is not on its fullest here. Let me just see if I can... Oops, turned it off accidentally. Told you, buttons are the opposite way around. So it defaults to brightness. Let's just crank that up a little bit. Exit. No, not that one. Menu. you. Um, what can we do here? We've got uh, brightness. Okay, so as you can see, we've got brightness, contrast, black level, eco, DCR, and sharpness. So a few extra controls here. We also have um, speakers built into this as well. Um, we're not outputting anything from the Pi at the moment for speakers. But um, when you look at these two screens, they do look very, very good quality-wise. Um, as I said, the new one is a tad heavier because it's got the aluminum casing on it. The uh, old one is lighter, but it is physically bigger. So from that perspective, this one would be much better off in your... Um, laptop bag or carry bag or whatever you carry your equipment around with. There's still a nice size for using um, for a portable device which is what they're intended for. With the Visa mount for this of course as well um, you can mount it easily on a wall or some other panel maybe for a small control console for a home automation system or something like that. And once I'm done the review, that's one of the things I'm going to look at doing with this is integrating it with the Raspberry Pi to um, make it part of the home automation system that I'm building here. I've got a whole bunch of videos that I've got coming up to show how I'm going to do that. Anyway, um, the specifications for this screen, I've already mentioned its resolution, 1920 by 1080 uh, USB-C input. If you've got a USB-C Gen 3.1 Gen 2 with video, then you can drive this entire panel straight from the one USB connector. Uh, what I have going on right here at the moment is I am powering the panel through the USB-C from my um, 5 volt adapter and the HDMI is coming out here from the Pi into here, sorry. 
and then the bottom one has got a USB-C to type A cable, sorry, wrong cable, that one, going into the Raspberry Pi um, standard USB input. It's unfortunate that the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, they didn't put the data lines in on this power connector as well, because then I could have just used the one connection for everything. But we're not here to criticize the Pi 4 right now, hopefully. We're here to have a look at this mage stock screen. So let's have a look. Um, some of the features of the monitor, there's got an LCD pixel statement. Um, there is slightly uneven brightness on the screen when displaying different screen pattern. The LCD has 99.99% or more effective pixels. So they do accept um, one or two pixels probably as faulty saying that 0.01% of the pixels may not light or may light incorrectly. Uh, the monitor uses high quality LCD panels, nevertheless pixels on the LCD may not light or appear as red or black dots. All of the above are normal with LCD monitor and will not affect normal usage of the product. Okay, now I've just upgraded my main desktop screen with a um, Dell, new Dell uh, ultra sharp screen and it has a zero pixel policy but then you know you're paying a lot more money um, for the screens I'll put a price up for what this currently is on the Magestock site I'll put a link to it as well uh, in case you wanted to get one for yourself um, Sun disposal let's have a look what else is in this manual here um, display warranty card so it supports 45 watt fast charge out on the on the output power of here, which is actually enough to drive a Raspberry Pi if you wanted to just run this in single monitor mode. Um, you could feed this with your power and have the output going to the Raspberry Pi power. Now the problem with that, of course, as I just mentioned, is that you won't see the um, touch screen. So, unfortunately, that configuration, whilst it will power up and it will work, um, you won't be able to read the touchscreen impressions or anything. Uh, obviously, if you've got a computing device that is outputting uh, everything via a USB 3.1 Gen 2 that can do power and everything else um, with the data lines on that connection, then that would work for this. It's got stereo speakers, 4 ohms, 1.2 watts. We'll try that in a moment. We've already seen the visa uh, the holes for the back for Visa. Uh, USB, sorry, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, we've already mentioned. A um, whole bunch of options for configuring the screen. Um, you know, cables and stuff like that. A uh, quick run through the ESD uh, on-screen display menus. Um, selecting different inputs, etc., etc. Display settings, of course, it's a 1920 by 1080 screen. If you're using it with Windows, how to reconfigure it to work with Windows. Um, we'll hook it up for Windows as well before the video is done. And just um, my computer has a, um, it, it doesn't have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 output on it, but it does have a USB C, sorry, USB 3 um, Gen 1, which should drive, it, it should be able to power this as well as um, reading the touch screen. So I'll plug that in and we'll see what Windows looks like on it as well. Uh, what else is on here? All about configuring Windows and Ma on the Mac. Um, using it with Linux and, and touch screen settings, changing the resolution. Of course, it's not 800 by 600, it's uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, ability to calibrate the touch screen if you need to. It says it does work with a touch, a pen or touch. So I'll dig out a couple of, see if I can find my um, Microsoft Surface pen and see if that will work happily with it. If I remember correctly, the older one um, did work with the pen from my Surface few troubleshooting tips and product specifications. 
So 1920 by 1080, full HD. I'm trying to see if there's something that might say the bit depth, whether it's a 16 million colors or a 1 billion color display. So 6-bit versus 8-bit versus 10-bit. Yeah, 6-bit would be 256K colors, which is probably what these are. Um, but it doesn't actually say here. It just says that it's two lanes, um, 30 pin. Uh, back LED backlight and it's an FFS display mode uh, panel type is uh, IGZO TFT LCD so that's about all she wrote it says provide a 2 amp power adapter of course if you're using it for feeding out to another device you're going to need a lot more than um, 2 amps so I would suggest using a uh, 4 or 5 amp power if you're going to be offloading out to something for fast charge and things um, okay, so let's unplug this second display here for a moment just so that the Raspberry Pi stops <laughs> extending the HDMI. Probably we'll have to reboot the Pi. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. You can see it's picking up my fingerprints quite rapidly. I don't know if it will. No, that's no good. No, very shiny screen. That's my one criticism of it right now. Okay, yeah, that's much better. The touch screen is exactly where I am doing my thing now. So that's good. Let's try this again. References, yeah, it's all perfectly right now so there's obviously a problem with the uh, Raspberry Pi um, touch interface it's running over two screens instead of one so configure screens HDMI resolution 1920 by 1080 of course you can change that if you wanted to um, different frequencies 60 Hertz 50 Hertz and 59.94 uh, orientation so you can Invert it if you want. I'm not going to say yes to that, but that's standard Raspberry Pi stuff. So I'm just going to exit that. Um, so let's just grab a video or something from YouTube, maybe one of mine. I'm going to see what this sounds like. Uh, it should be quite nice, I hope. So let me just put the microphone a little bit closer. So these are really, really tiny speakers, so they do sound a little bit tinny, but they do work, which is nice. Yeah, and perfectly listenable when you are um, trying to watch a movie or something like that. Obviously not the best sounding quality. You could put headphones in, though, because it does have the headphone jack on the side. So let's just stop this. Okay, so um, I'm not sure what else to show you on this. Um, we will be seeing a lot more of this screen in my future videos. So let me just stop there a second and we'll have a look at the smaller screen that we have uh, also from MageDoc. This is another portable monitor and we'll see what features this has. So this one, really nice for portability. My old one here, I... Um, just change my view again a second there we go so my old one here I've used for a long time going to conferences and things like that it's been very very handy um, slides nicely into my backpack along with my laptop and then I can use it as a second screen so you can see the thickness there and let's have a look at this new one it is um, this new one is a little bit thick is it thicker oh man nope it's not it's about the same size um, but it's definitely a significant um, shrinkage in actual physical size. If I put that in the bottom corner, you can see there that physically it's much, much smaller. It's a good inch and a half on the left and a full almost an inch on the top. Um, so that's nice. doesn't save any weight, but it certainly saves um, on the baggage space. Um, but I do welcome the extra weight 
if it means that my screen is going to be better protected or if I'm going to put this on a wall for um, some kind of HMI for control or something like that then it would also be uh, very useful to have because um, you know you're not going to pull it off the wall too easily um, compared to if it had a plastic backing. Um, quite often you'll get people, especially if you put this on a movable visa mount, where they'll grab the screen and they'll pull it to move it. And if the mount's a little bit tight, they'll just end up ripping it off the mount, which is not good. So having a nice solid aluminum back is going to be a good thing. Probably helps also keeping down emissions and things, I would imagine. So quality looks quite nice. Um, buttons have got a good feel to them. Speakers aren't the best, but then I never expected them to be, and you wouldn't for something like this. Uh, if you really want it quality, then you're going to plug your gaming headphones into the outlet on the side, and you're going to listen to it that way. All right, let's get to this other screen now. Okay, when Mage Docs sent me this screen, I actually asked them for it. They actually contacted me about reviewing this new 11 point six inch IPS display and I said yes but I also as I mentioned was looking at um, doing a bunch of videos on screens for Raspberry Pis and other computers either reusing old screens and things like that but also looking at whether uh, what options there are from a new screen perspective for Raspberry Pis and other single board computers. Now you can get a lot of screens and including the official Raspberry Pi um, seven inch screen has got I think about an 800 by 480 display something like that uh, that costs you about $80 US for the screen about 100 Canadian but then you still got to put it in a case you've got to get power for it uh, if you want speakers you've got to sort that out and all that kind of stuff too so I was curious about what other options there were that would be comparable to that but with a lot less hassle not everybody has the sk skills to put something together themselves and they want to just have a nice easy solution that can be plugged in and go so this hopefully and I've never looked inside this yet should be a solution to that uh, I, off I wanted to get when I asked them about it I wanted to get one that was the same physical size as the official Raspberry Pi one so that we were com comparing the price of this is around 100, 120 Canadian, I think. I'll put the price up on the screen uh, in post edit. So what we have here is a T007-1 IPS 1024 by 600 resolution. So right away, it's a um, couple of hundred extra pixels in both directions as well. It is already in a case. I think a lot of the connectivity options are going to be the same. So we've got, oh, in this case, we've got 12 volt input, not five. Uh, we've got a five volt output. So obviously that's nice. We've got a um, five volt 2.5 amp output, which is really good. That's going to drive a Raspberry Pi. We've got an HDMI input. We've got a USB input, which is five volts, two amps um, for the USB-C port or for power and touch. Um, and then we've got a headphone output as well. Now, obviously for a Raspberry Pi, we're going to need to use the 5 volt 2.5 amp output to power it. And then we're going to use the USB-C um, here to feed into the standard uh, USB 3 port on the Raspberry Pi 4 to give us the touch screen because, you know, you, otherwise you're not going to be able to power it as well. But we use the 5.2 volt 5 amp output to power the Raspberry Pi. We'll see how that goes. So let's just have a look at the actual screen and then we'll get it configured and up and running. So the screen is feeling pretty rugged. Has a couple of holes on the back for mounting on a wall or some kind of panel. A pair of speakers. Um, 12 volt, 5 volt, HDMI, USB in, and headphones, HP for headphones. Um, so all the connections on the side. Um, basically, it's a in the same controller interface on the right-hand side. So what this basically is, is the screen we've just looked at, uh, the one over here, it's like its baby brother. This is a 7-inch version versus an 11.6-inch version. So that's nice. Got the Pulo sticker on the front too. So in this case, we actually get a... 12 volt, 2 amp 
power supply with it and nice to see that it is the North American version. We've got a little flip up stand for it. We'll pull that out of the bag. Uh, we have a USB type A to type C connector. Sorry, wrong screen there. There we go. An HDMI, uh, micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. Um, the input to this is actually a medium size HDMI. But the output of a Raspberry Pi 4 is micro, which is probably why they're including this, which is nice. We have a, in this case, a mini HDMI to full HDMI adapter. That'll go with that little one there. And finally, we have another USB to USB-C cable. So pretty much everything that we had with the big screen, with the exception that we do have a power supply with this as well. So let me just pause the video, get all this hooked up, and um, we'll continue from there. Okay, we set up everything we can. So let's have a look at how well this is doing. I'll just zoom in a little bit, make a better view. Uh, so as you can see, this is the seven inch display. I've got the USB-C connection on the end connected to the Raspberry Pi standard input if i just zoom back out again you can see that plugged in well actually you can't it's just underneath here the top one's plugged into a hard disk drive right now so that's plugged in here this is for my keyboard and mouse combo which is down here and the power connection is actually going off to a separate power adapter because the output of this one for power is actually a USB micro, a micro USB connector, not a USB-C. I don't have a micro USB to USB-C adapter. So we'll just leave that hooked up that way. And as you can see here, I'm quite happily using the, there we go, sorry, not tapping hard enough. All right, so just close that again. Okay, so as you can see, touch screen is working just fine. You can open up folders, trash can, um, bring up the browser. Okay, no problems at all. Um, the resolution of this is 1024 by 600. <laughs> I have to think there for a second. I actually bring up the utility we were using on the previous screen. Screen capture, um, configure screens, HDMI. Yep, 1024 by 600. So this is much higher resolution than the standard Raspberry Pi screen and it's about the same price but you get this thing already in a case and with built-in speakers and other functionality. For instance, um, 12 volt input, it's got a five volt power output, HDMI in, and it has the touch screen that can go to the Pi. Now you can use also use this with Windows 10 and pretty much any other uh, computer you like that has a USB input that will support a standard touch screen and also HDMI output. Um, so, Standard menu items that we had, same as the previous screen. If I just turn this around a second, you can see here we've got power, um, the plus and minus, we've got the exit, and then we have the menu button at the bottom. Two speakers as well, and a wall mount little bracket there. So if we bring up the menu, you can see immediately we have brightness and contrast, um, and that's the exit. So come up, you've got plus and minus, the next one's up, so you can scroll around. Um, pick all your different functions. I'm not going to go into every one of these. They're pretty much the same thing for most screens that you see that are out there. Um, change the color temperature ranges, aspect ratio, uh, brightness and contrast. So the brightness is 63, 
contrast is set to 50 right now. So we'll just exit out of that and now um, I'll just get rid of the screen so we've seen that. So uh, speakers, what do the speakers sound like? Let's just bring up my um, video that we were looking at in the last screen on my uh, screen you reuse kind of a theme going on here so we'll just bring that up and we'll just play this one go full screen why not hi welcome to the breadboard and what we're looking at here as you can tell here this one actually is a little bit louder I think the other screens probably have a way of adjusting the volume uh, okay. Um, oh, like without selecting anything, there is a volume control. Right, quite easily there. A little bit now, tinny, but again, on expected on because of the type of screen that we have. Let's just get this video back out of here again. And we'll exit that. So that's it working with the Raspberry Pi 4. As I said, straight out from here, straight into the HDMI. Working quite nicely. So I guess the next thing now is to uh, plug these two screens, the um, 11.6 and this one, into a Windows well, I'm going to use a Windows 10 machine and see how well that goes. Um, should work no problems at all, but let's see. Let me just hook that up and I'll be right back. Okay, got Windows all set up on all three screens now. I've got these two here, but I also have my main uh, capture monitor that I've been using with OBS to capture everything. So all three are on the computer right now, so I can test it under Windows 10. Just had to quickly set this screen. Um, I could pick in any one of them as being a touch screen and assigned it to this screen. Not sure about getting two touch screens working simultaneously on Windows 10 right now. My main screen is my big 24 inch Acer that I'm using for doing the screen capture. Um, my touch screen and the one which is the 11.6 inch Mage Dock display is all set up as an extended screen and my 7 inch which is a 1024 by 600 screen is set up as an extended screen as well but not the same as this one so we basically have three screens running two 1080p screens and one 1024 by 600 and if I move into this with my mouse I don't know if you can see that very well I've pulled up a full HDR video here from YouTube. This is a actually an HDR 8K OLED display, 60 frames per second, but it will do the job just as well to show. Now, unfortunately, I can't record with full HDR right now, so I can only look at it myself and report what I'm seeing, but the display quality is absolutely um, awesome. Uh, right through from the blacks, right through to the bright whites and things like that. Um, just skip through this a little bit. You know the the display quality for a 1080p monitor as an as a secondary one is just stunning. So unfortunately, the smaller one here is not an HDR display, but that's okay. Uh, this one's only like an eighty dollar display. Um, the T116D is about a hundred and sixty-ish dollars uh, US, so a bit more expensive. But because it's HDR and 12-bit display, um, and it seems to have FreeSync capability in it as well, so would be good for gaming. That makes it into a whole different league for the better. So anyway, I am running the center one right now with this video which is just an HDR test video my main screen is capturing everything running OBS um, I've got my 
8K monitor up the top here capturing things. And then I have this bottom one um, not doing anything right now except sitting with a Windows um, panel on it. So I'm just going to stop this video. As you can see, I'm doing it all through touch here. Um, so you can see I'm working touch quite happily with this screen and it's not having any issues whatsoever. Perfectly good. Windows didn't need any setup at all except for telling it that this was an HDR screen. I also went into the menus of this screen and told it I had an HDR uh, as well, which is the, yeah, the bottom menu on here. And it tells me that it is HDR mode is auto. So it will come on and off depending on the signal that's being fed to it. So that's really good. So Windows recognized it as HDR, reports it as 12-bit. In fact, I'll bring up the Windows. Um, if I can find a screen. There we go. So you can see here it's reporting the three screens, two 1080p screens and the one 1024 by 600. So if I scroll down, you can see here, found it straight away, 1024 by 600. Uh, second screen, which is the Mage Dock T1116D, is reporting as 1920 by 1080, which of course it should be. Uh, it also sees it as an HDR screen. And if I go into the HDR color settings, you'll see all of these are saying yes, play HDR videos, games, WCG apps. The whole lot is all here up and running. So Windows 10 works a treat, Linux works a treat, touch screens work right out of the box, no drivers needed to be loaded or anything else. Um, minor bit of configuration all documented to get the right touch panel working with the right screen um, in Windows. That's a minor thing to do. Um, might be possible to get this one working simultaneously with Windows as well, which means you could have two screens with touch panels. Actually, why don't I try that right now while you're there watching? So if I go into um, control panel and tablet PC settings. Oh, I guess I need to plug in the second touch screen as well. Okay, everything is plugged in and it immediately came up with a calibration screen. So what I'm going to do is click setup and what it's showing, you can't see it because it's not on one of these screens right now. I've got a screen up saying tap the screen with a finger to identify it as the touch screen. If it's not the right screen, press enter to move to the next one. So I'm pressed enter and now you can see it is on this screen. So I'm going to touch this one and press enter to proceed to the next step. If that's a touch screen, press touch it as a screen. Okay, so I've identified technically two touch screens now, I hope. So if I just say okay to that, if I touch this screen, yeah, it seems to be working on here. Once you become a professional race car driver, it's in. Yeah, it's working just fine. Go back. Uh, go into that uh, HDR video. Skip that ad. Okay, we're now back into that HDR video right there. Perfect. So let's just stop this and we'll shrink it down. Now let's see if, hey, perfect. This now works on hit this screen too. So now we have two touch screens working simultaneously. If I go to here, minimize that, bring it back up again. I can probably drag it. Come on. Not letting me. There we go. Grab it with this one, bring it across. Now, theoretically, we should be able to make that bigger and play it on here. Of course, it's not HDR in here. So, how's that? A little bit of lessening, a little bit of learning on Windows there for me. Never done that before. So, 
two touch screens, one non-touch. Each touch works on its own panel and fully functional. No problem. Of course, it moves the mouse when you touch things. If I take it to my further screen and then go into here, my mouse has moved off, but it reappears on that screen. If I touch this one, then it's here, which of course is expected. Yeah, it's not discovering my device, so we'll just have to leave it at that um, for now. So I guess that concludes the uh, review of the MageDog T116D Pro um, and the 7-inch T007-1, both IPS displays. This one's a 1020. Uh, this one's a full HD 1920 by 1080 screen. This one is 1024 by 600 as well. This one is more designed for single board computers and things like that. But of course, there's nothing that limits you to that. Uh, the only downside I saw with this one, which is only an issue of having an adapter cable, is that the uh, 5 volt output is a micro USB. So if you were going to plug it into a Pi 4, you would have to get an adapter cable to take it to a USB-C connector. Um, obviously a Pi 3 and other devices that use micro USB, that's going to still work just fine and we'll be able to power it through here. So uh, I'm very impressed with both of them. Speakers aren't the best in the world, but I never ever had an expectation that they would be. Um, so that's okay. You can still hear it. You've still got headphone sockets, so you can plug in a decent pair of headphones if you want to. Both are very, very portable. The stand for the 7-inch one is not what I would have called ideal. It looks like it's supposed to be able to um, drop into the slot here, but it doesn't. It just sits on the top. I've sent an email to MageDoc asking them about that. I mean, it still sits there perfectly comfortable and works fine. The display adapters stands, not adapters, for the top one, which is like this. These come with the MageDoc 11.6 inch displays. These are very handy because you can actually pull them apart for packaging, but they can also support uh, multiple angles. Let me just make that a bigger screen so you can see a little easier. There we go. So you can just bend it down to change the angle. And then these just pull out uh, when you want to stow it in your laptop case. So if I just pull this out now, all right, you just disconnect it, fold these in, and now you can just tuck that into a little pocket in your laptop. Um, the, dis the stand that comes with this display is little, it's just plastic, but still quite small. Just the back folds down and that's pretty much it. So you can tuck that into a pocket in your laptop display quite easily and away you go. Um, neither of these needed anything special to get them up and running, which is nice to see. And um, I'm very, very happy with them. So both of these are going to be getting used in more of my future projects and you'll be seeing more of them. And I'll link in the description to Amazon where you could pick the, one of these up for yourself. Uh, it will be an affiliate link. That doesn't mean it will cost you anything. But if you do buy through the link, it does mean that I will get a small commission uh, from uh, the Amazon services, affiliate service, for you buying through one of my links. So not a cost to you at all. It won't cost you any more money. It will just give me a little bit to help me run the channel. So that completes the video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, then don't. Uh, if you have any feedback, you want me to check something else with these screens, please let me know in the comments and I will see you on the next video. I do have some more displays to look at of various kinds and I do have an upgrade video very similar to the first one I did on reusing LCD displays from laptops, only this time I'm going to be first of all getting a larger format screen which was a 1600 by 900 which I didn't have a driver board for before um, we're going to give that a go. It required a four channel cold cathode fluorescent driver. <laughs> That's what it was. But it needed a four channel one. I didn't have one of those. So now I do. So we're going to give that a go. I'm also going to be trying a full 1920 by 1080. Um, I think that's the resolution of it. Or 1600 by 1200. One of those. Anyway, a larger desktop 
uh, LCD display which only had VGA input. So you know there's a lot of those available in flea markets and various other places for just a few dollars because they're useless to anybody that upgrades to HDMI and things like that. But if you can get one of these boards which only cost you fifteen dollars or thereabouts with the correct LVDS cable then there's nothing stopping you from um, converting it to work with HDMI, DisplayPort, um, composite video and other uh, input signals. So we'll be giving that another uh, look at in a future video as well and not very long away either so keep watching. Uh, anyway that's it so see you in the next video. Bye.